Show Season 11 is brought to you by British University Vietnam. Hello! Welcome to another enlightening episode of IELTS Face Off. As the main concept of this season is that English is the language that connects us all, this episode is all about connection. The connection between the guest, the connection between English and our life. And our two main guests are seasoned, talented translators, interpreters, English teachers, and educators. It is not only the high-profile jobs for them, but it's also about the dedication, the enthusiasm, the efforts they put into every lesson, every translation, and every student. So, let's get ready to be enlightened and, dare I say, entertained as we delve into the captivating lives of them. Let's get started! In season 11, we have the pleasure of hosting a remarkable group of guests. English teachers spanning multiple generations. Amidst this esteemed cohort, there is one teacher who captivates our attention with a treasure trove of intriguing stories that radiate his unwavering passion for the English language. Allow me to introduce the extraordinary teacher, Lei Bu Han. He started his job of interpretation and translation in 1975, and in his career, he has had time to serve high-ranking officials of Vietnam by accompanying them, sitting next to or behind them in meetings to interpret for them. He also spent most of his time sitting in the cabin and interpreting for whoever was on it. He also taught English during that period of time and helped many interpreters to better their skills. Get ready to witness a true maestro in action as his passion for English shines through his eyes, leaving an indelible mark on those fortunate enough to encounter his presence. Can be I. We are ready to hear his stories. So we are in um, the area with the concept named symphony. When we talk about symphony, we think about the passion, we think about the journey of a lot of interest. And um, sitting next to me is the person that I have immensely huge respect for, who is really passionate for languages and who has um, left such a legacy of learning languages and of using languages to make considerable contributions to the world and to the society. Thay, thank you very much for being on the show. Welcome to the show, Thay. Thank you very much, but uh, I'm afraid that those words that you said might be a little bit too big for me. I'm just, uh, uh, what do you say, a simple, modest interpreters, a modest teacher, that's all. Wow. I love uh, interpreting, and I love teaching, and I do these jobs. Yes, and you have spent your whole life doing this job, and I think that's incredible. Yes. Oh, now, I say how many years? 48 years since I started learning English. So I work with English. And of course, with English, I could improve. I could, I could live up. And I could, uh, what do you say, um, earn the living for the families, uh, for my children, and for the education of my children as well. Yes. And I think that this um, environment and the vibe really suits us because I remember the first word um, earlier when you talked to me, you say, love it, love it. Your eyes right. always sparkled when we talked about languages. And I can feel that passion from you. Um, I am an international relations student. And as a diplomat student, I have a huge respect for you because I know that being an interpreter is not just transferring words in the meetings, it's not just using languages, but it is also, you know, like you can function as a confidence, you function as a fact checkers, and you have a wide range of knowledge. Um, that, that's, that's a big deal. I'm really curious about um, the first step in your career. At what age did you start your career as a translator? Well, my first steps in the career as an interpreter, you know, I just had a meeting with my teacher who just led me into the jobs of the interpretation. Uh, that's Mr. Ling Ok, you know, in 1975 when I was just in the last year, the final year of the, uh, in the university. So we were mobilized into the army to serve a Ho Chi Minh operation. Whoa, yeah, that's wow. in 1975. I was not yet graduated, but we worked as interpreter. And they asked me to work as the interpreters in one training classes for, uh, what do you say, kind of um, the mechanics 
the someone who used the uh, bulldozer from some other foreign country. Uh, I could not work. I was scared. So I told the uh, officer, saying that, well, I'm afraid that I could not work for that. So they looked around, and then they found Mr. Leng Ok Ke. And then when Mr. Ke came, so while he was the interpreter, I was her assistant, just work sometimes in the class. But that was my first step to step into the jobs of the interpreter. Well, I was really scared on those days. But I, I was with him, so, you know, I learned and then I work and then, well, getting on and on every day. Well, so when you started learning English language, did you, did you have something in your mind that, okay, I'm going to become an interpreter or it just happened by chance? Uh, I did not have really the picture of what I would become. But at that time, I just start learning, you know. Uh, at first, I didn't think that I would be uh, a student of English language. Just because when I entered the university, we were tested for the languages. So I thought that I would be learning Russian rather than English. But then, uh, I don't know why. Uh, our teacher, Mr. Votalam, picked me into English. Uh, department. So I started learning English. And from there, I, do, I did not know at first that I will be the teacher or I will be someone working in some other field with English as the tools, as the means mm -hmm. to work. But then in 1975, I just said to you, so that was my first step into the job of an interpreter, that I feel that I love it. After the first success, mm -hmm. if it is a failure, then uh, I do not know that if I could be the interpreter or not <laughs> knows, for the whole right? life. Yeah, who can know that? Yes. Uh, maybe I was too scared to work as the interpreter. Yes. Yeah. Well, th this story is really inspiring because nowadays a lot of young people are advised to follow their dreams, follow their passion, but they forget that once you got some success or achievement in a field, the passion started to bloom. Yeah. It is the case of you. Uh, it was my case, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> yes. Well, wow. now, you know, nowadays English is really popular among the young students, but at your age, I know that English was not really a thing. Right. So you were just maybe like one of few students who study English. Right. What was the way that you learned English back then? Uh, well, it was quite hard, you know, to learn these first days just because. Um, uh, when we start learning the first year or the second year in the university, we did not have books, oh. you know, even books. So uh, our teacher, you, you may remember Mr. Nguyen Quoc Hong, right? Or many people call him Hong Ma, who <laughs> had the uh, series of uh, the English uh, teaching uh, in, on, on TV. You know? And he was the one who wrote the text. Mm. And then the uh, printing shop just printed out the text early in the morning and then we just divide the paper, you know. Wow. It's just paper to each other, that's the text. And we just learn from it. Wow. Only that. Without any other books or programs and no more. But now you can see that so many, you know. Yes. At the time, so I was uh, start teaching. So we teach something like the book uh, by Mr. Vu Tan Lâm. Yes. Yeah, just only one book available in Vietnam, in, 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 in the north of Vietnam, in Hanoi at that time, and most of us use it. Mm -hmm. But then in the 80s, we have other, uh, other books and other, and then now that's available internet, you know, too. Yeah. They can learn it, quite a lot of things, mm -hmm. everything available, just not like us mm -hmm. in the old days. So I remember we were sitting, just say, you know, that. We have the sandal, you know, mm -hmm. put the sandal out and we sit on that. Again, the world in some evacuated area, yes. just because the American bombed the North Vietnam. Oh. So we evacuated from Hanoi mm -hmm. to some other area. And there we do not have the classroom, yes. no school, no classroom. We just sat in the communal house mm -hmm. and then with the sandal, Yes. I thought about it. And then we sat against the world and then we listened to our teacher speaking English. And the village people look, well, what they were doing? <laughs> Talking and speaking, speaking like, some kind know. of the languages, you know that. <laughs> yes. No, just like, like that. That's really touching because, 
you know, you didn't have enough like books or pens no, or like no. audio tapes to listen to. No. Just like teacher and student interaction mm. under a very difficult si situation wow. of yeah. a nation. You know, at that time, so uh, a friend of mine who sent, uh, he, he, he studied in the same um, secondary school with us. Mm. He went abroad and he sent us one book of grammar, English grammar. Mm -hmm. That is more than gold, more <laughs> precious than gold, you know, for us. Yes. You know that? Mm -hmm. And uh, our teacher had a radio. Mm -hmm. We listened to uh, uh, Voice of Vietnam, you know? And then we listened to Voice of America. Yes. But of course, secretly, you know, anyone who knows that we listen to the voice of America we could be <laughs> sent in and handcuffed at that time. Oh, so and secretly and doing in secret. Right, oh. because we were there in the countryside, you know, and the people did not know that what we were doing. And say, wow, oh, someone listening to something, foreign languages, it just be communicating with the well, the right. enemy or so, that would be dangerous, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the way you absorb the cultural you know, um, things yeah. from the language. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so you mentioned a lot of authors, a lot of um, your teachers. Yes. Yes, so uh, what is something that they shared in common about learning languages back then? Well, they gave that a lot. Our teacher encouraged us. Of course, the interpretation is something I love very much. Yes. So in our um, third year or fourth year, I don't know, I could not remember very well, but then there was a book, just the, some abstract from a book. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, he asked her to translate. And uh, just everything's OK, but just one phrase, you nurse. You, you nurse. nurse. And everyone uh, translate into go like ita, or go like ita. Everyone seemed happy and everyone seemed good and then quite satisfied with that. Yes. And uh, the teacher asked, do you have any other way to translate it? No one have any other way. So then we ask, if you have any other way? So the teacher say, Cô là y tá, thì chó cũng có phái lĩnh. Wow, and that's in the way, you know, that's obeys us. Because yes. that is something very, very Vietnamese. Yes. Yeah, in that way, that's correct. Mm -hmm. But the, the way that the teacher said is something very special that mm -hmm. contain in it the cultural value in it. Sure. And we should know that when the people are saying violin, and what is violin first, and why, and when the people say chó có violin, Oh, that's that we need to know the Vietnamese culture to understand it. And yes. the Vietnamese people, when we read it, we yeah. feel much happier mm -hmm. than just read the sentence, uh, Kula y ta a. That's yes. it. Wow. Yeah. And that encouraged me very much. I said, oh, there's a good way. There's so many ways to convey the same thing mm -hmm. from one language to the other. So I should learn to do the same thing, to do the same way. Yes. That's it. That encouraged me, you know. That, wow. uh, to delve into um, many layers of meanings of words and to know that languages is not just about words. It's about the stories, not just that, right? the culture values like you mentioned, mm -hmm. the history and everything around us. Right. Wow. And you are a seasoned um, interpreter. Yeah. You have been working for a lot of high-level government officials. Yes. Um, that's, that's a demanding work and occupation. Wow. Um, do you have any memorable experiences as a translator? Uh, yeah, good memory. <laughs> and then also some bad memory as well. Wow. Wow. I want to listen to both. <laughs> not, not the life of the interpreter, you know? Yes. Yeah. I uh, accompany the leaders of the government of Vietnam, mm -hmm. yeah, prime minister, and then the deputy prime minister, where else around the world, and then uh, to many countries, and also to accompany them in the meeting in the country, mm -hmm. and with the talk to other, uh, well, foreign partners. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes it's good that the people may look at the interpreters following the uh, leaders of the country, saying that, well, all the party, all the nice words, and so and so. But yes. sometimes, some other thing behind that they don't know. You yes. know, there's 
pressure on the interpreter. Mm -hmm. And the biggest pressure on the interpreter is that someone said there's no good interpreter at all. No, Why? not a good interpreter. It's a good interpretation. And you can be very good today, but you could be very a total idiot tomorrow. You know that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you can be rendering a very good interpretation today, mm -hmm. but tomorrow you sit silent. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to interpret it. That could be. Yeah, yeah. and that truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I do not say who this, but um, it's a foreign, in a foreign country, yeah. when we were sitting in a booth like that, yeah. and we listened to the next cabin, they kept silent. Suddenly, they kept silent. Just because of the speaker over there, they just turned away. He gave away yeah. the, the paper already prepared, and he, speak, he spoke freely. Yes. And then the interpreter could not follow that. And then he's silent. He, keeps, he kept silent. <laughs> and the whole, the whole meeting room, yes. well, they just were with the earphone, you know, the headset. Mm -hmm. And they said they could not hear anything just because that the uh, master channel. And from there, we relay, we listen to their language, and then we interpret into our language, into Vietnamese, uh -huh. and then other listening, and interpret into France, or French, or German, or so. But then this silence, and the whole, everything else silent. Mm -hmm. That's the nightmare. And we were afraid that one day we could be like that. Luckily, I did not have any time like that. Wow. <laughs> I think it's due to your talent and your capabilities. Oh, no, I, I, I think I, so. <laughs> that's a luck. <laughs> that's a luck. That wow. we don't know that. Just because you know that we might be good at something. We mm -hmm. talk. Wow. Yes. And the people look and say, wow, he knows everything. But there's a lot of all other things we don't know. Sure. Like, it's a lot of knowledge. Yeah. They can talk about a lot of things. Right. So yeah. many fields we do not know, you know. Yes. That's it. That's the question. And you can be very frequent. You can talk very nice today. But tomorrow, when there's something strange, something mm -hmm. out of your, well, just say, the scope of uh, what knowledge, yes. and then you don't know how to speak. Sure. Yeah. So it required you to always keep learning and to become a lifelong learner. That's what I would like to say. Interpretation is not just a language. For example, I translate or interpret from English into Vietnamese mm -hmm. and Vietnamese into English. So of course, we have to be good at the two languages, mm -hmm. English and Vietnamese. Many people good at English, but not very good at Vietnamese. Yeah, they are the case mm -hmm. and could not, well, you know turn this into simple and then understandable Vietnamese as well. And that's not enough. Yes. But the two languages mm -hmm. are just the means mm. to convey the idea, sure. to convey the knowledge. That's it. And if you know the thing, you know the technique, you know the, 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 um, what the matter, the question that the people are speaking about, mm -hmm. that's OK. But if that's something you don't know, and the language are there, but you cannot do, yeah. you can do the job. Sure. And that was the case. Wow. That's why I say that, well, we learn. Mm -hmm. We learn not only the, the English and the Vietnamese, but we learn other things as well, how we learn. It's not um, learning by going to the official classes, mm -hmm. to school, but by um, reading. Reading every you know, day. listening to other people, listening to, well, radios or TV or so. That's also the way of learning. You know? mm -hmm. And um, once we could learn, we could have something to work, to interpret one day. And then when you interpret something today, mm -hmm. and then you learn at the same time something, yes. something else. And that will help you to interpret your work the next day. Yes. Yeah, that's it. By that, step by step, we survive <laughs> until the end of my career. <laughs> it's the benefits of, you know, continuously accumulating knowledge on a daily basis. So um, I'm really glad and honored to be um, a very, very tiny part of the education picture. We are here with a lot of educators. Um, we are working for an educational shows, yeah. and you are such a well-respected educator, and well, I really you. want to listen to your advice, or do you have any expectations for the younger generations of 
interpreters, of educators, for the better future. Oh, wow. How could I give them advice when I was an old one, an outdated one like, <laughs> like me? From you you would know? Be but anyway, valuable. like I was saying to my student, to the yes. learner in my class before, that learn it, study today, and then you can work tomorrow. Just say, for example, as an interpreter, if you could read the uh, kind of the paper of the subject that you will interpret tomorrow, today, then tomorrow you can work better. That's it. You learn things today, and that will help you the next day. So learn, learn, and learn. Never think that, oh, that's enough. No, never enough. Because what we know is too little compared to what we don't know. Yes. That is something that I always tell myself and remind myself that, okay, I learned something today, maybe I don't use it tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, right. many years after this year, right. I might use it and right. I might thank me later for learning all of those stuff. Yes, that's wow. true. Wow, you are such a source of inspiration and motivation for us to become a lifelong learner. Thank you so much for being on the show, Thay. But before we leave the show, we um, actually have prepared a small surprise for you. Um, Thank you. Because you mentioned a lot of your teachers, and you know out there a lot of students are mentioning yeah, you. <laughs> so let's find out what surprise is about. Yeah, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll say after you. After the inspiring talk with our beloved teacher, we surprised him with a fruitful moment when he met one of his successful students, Ms. Thuy. She arrived a little early, knowingly on the same day as Mr. Kang's segment. She's coming in early with the hope of catching her former teacher before he leaves. They've kept in touch over the years, but moments like these are rare and special. They had a little time to update on their lives and work, but now I would love to spend more time with this lady to know more about her journey with English learning and teaching. And our next guest, Ms. Nguyễn Thu Thủy. She has been working for the Immigration Department Ministry of Public Security for 17 years as an international cooperation officer, translator, and interpreter before switching her job. Currently, she has helped students achieve many large and prestigious scholarships with profound and authentic writings. She won two prestigious government scholarships, including the Chibani Scholarship 2016-2017 by the UK government and Australia Award Scholarship 2016 by Australian government. And the UK was her chosen destination for the master's study of international human rights law at the age of three. She loves the world change, as she thinks this had led her to many amazing opportunities in her life. Along with her teaching, she's going to share her passion in education and her story when deciding to change and go for what she really cares about. Welcome back to the show. One of the highlights of being the host of IFO is I got a chance to meet a lot of brilliant minds. And I think uh, the guest who is sitting next to me is a perfect example of lifelong learning. She has an amazing career with a lot of occupations and she's someone who always embraces changes and um, you know get some accomplishments and achievements both personally and professionally ladies and gentlemen it is my honor to introduce to you the translator English teacher entrepreneur Chi Thuy thank you nice to meet you and nice to be here with IFO it's an honor to have you here on the show my honor too Yes, I read through your profile and I'm amazed at a lot of achievements. Um, you know, you are a translator, an interpreter, um, you work for the government, you are an English teacher. Um, would you mind giving us an overview, brief overview of your career? Oh, actually, 
I've gone through several occupations, like I say, wearing many hats. Um, I graduated from the University of Foreign Languages, and my first aim was to become an English teacher. After teaching for nearly two years at Fulham University, I moved on to the Immigration Department, Ministry of Public Security, a, t a totally different area. And I have been working there for nearly 17 years. Nearly and two then, decades. Yeah, nearly two decades. <laughs> and um, uh, then I left. Mm -hmm. At the time I left the m m public security force, I was already at the um, senior lieutenant colonel rank. I, I started from scratch all over again. Uh, I became um, an English teacher, educator, uh, independent independent educational counselor. I left the, um, a very stable job to do a startup with my friend, and now I'm academic manager of a um, independent educational counselor group in Hanoi, based in Hanoi, and we are independent educational counselor. It's a bit different from the, um, like a study abroad agency. Yes, I think it is no exaggeration to say that you are a woman of versatility. Thank You're you wearing for many hats, and I feel like you can do a lot of things. Um, so, just earlier on, we met your teacher, Thay mm -hmm. Khan. Um, how has becoming the student of Thay Khan influenced your approach to teaching? Let's talk about your first job, a teacher. Actually, a lot. Uh, not only Thay Khan. Uh, there are so many other teachers at every stage of life, since primary school to secondary school, and later on in house trainings when I was working for the immigration department, mm -hmm. I attended a translation and interpretation course. And uh, among many teachers, Thầy Khánh and Thầy Nguyễn Quốc Hùng, uh, Phạm Ngọc Thạch, uh, are the three teachers that influenced and affected me most. I, um, I learned a lot from them. You know, at my time, the teaching approach was totally different, like um, teacher-centered. Most of the time, the teacher uh, talked, and a uh, student would listen and to exercises. And um, in the interpretation, interpretation lessons with uh, Mr. Khánh, Mr. Hùng, and Mr. Thái, um, we co directly communicated with them. We learned, we heard about their experience as an interpreters. They are, they are all amazing teachers and also very experienced and talented uh, interpreters. And what they taught us was uh, like accumulated and filtered from their practical experience. So it is precious for me. And later on, uh, not only after the course, I improved myself as an interpreter and translator. I performed better a job, but also I carried with me all the knowledge and skills I learned with them onto this job. And during the mentoring uh, work with my students. And for example, I, I learned um, for Mr. Khan, he is really encouraged, encouraging teacher. Uh, always requiring us to like, produce various options, various translation options from, for one, one source text. And for Mr. Nguyen Quốc Hùng, uh, he taught us to how to quickly respond in a very intense duration of interpretation, like, um, now I give you a text, and within two or three seconds, give me your solution which grammar structure you would use to convey this text from Vietnamese into English and vice versa. And uh, I learned from him how to quickly respond in very intense situation. And um, for Mr. Phạm Ngọc Thạch, now he's the leader at the Han University of Hanoi, right? Um, he taught a kiss, no kiss, just yeah. a kiss. Uh, keep it short and simple. Wow. Yes. Everything he say, just try the best to, to keep it short and simple so that you will not be confused or not too, much, too worried about complexity, about grammar. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, simplicity is the best way 
to convey our idea, especially in such stressful and intense duration during simultaneous uh, interpretation or in high profile meetings. Sure. Yes, I'm really grateful and appreciate what I have learned from those teachers. Yes. I always, um, like when I talk to previous generation, I always feel like you all have a strong foundation of English languages and you can really seamlessly use the language to progress in your life both professionally and personally. Like Peihang already complimented you during class, you are the only one who come up with the solutions in terms of rewriting the sentences and the interpretation. How did you learn and study English back then? At high school, I learned Russian and during secondary school, I learned nothing because I grew up in a a small town and there was uh, no teacher of English. So we didn't learn foreign language, any foreign language during secondary school. And um, when I was at high school, once I saw the Big Bang on the textbook cover, and I just thought that someday uh, I want to be here in person to see Big Bang by myself. Wow. And so I turned to English, although my um, um, the foreign language that I learned at school was Russian, mm. yes, and um, I learned only grammar, the grammar in use, I learned all the book grammar in use, and with the knowledge from that book only, came to an and enter the university entrance test, and um, I don't know how, can I pass? Wow, that's so cool. Um, you, know, you know, when I was at first years of university, I couldn't speak English. I think I was good at grammar and vocab. I, can, I could hear people speak, I could understand, but I couldn't speak. I couldn't express myself clearly. When uh, during oral examination, um, I remember um, my teacher asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Namdi. Okay, can you describe something about the hometown? It's poor. <laughs> and he said, how poor is it? Can you uh, explain? And I explained to him in Vietnamese. <laughs> Nghèo đó thầy. Yeah, at that time, like, I no idea never, about speaking. I, I will never forget. I really thought that he didn't understand what poor mean. Oh, So I explained yeah. the Vietnamese meaning to him. Until recently, it was a bit like less confident, not enough, uh, like a belief in myself, in my speaking, my pronunciation until the master's study in the UK. Before leaving to the UK, I still heard someone say that to pronunciation is, is not good. Mm. So I, I, dare not, like, I dare not speak anything out English because I, am afraid, I was afraid of people judging, judging me on my accent, on my pronunciation. But when I went over to the UK and my teacher, she told me that um, the accent is the value. Uh, every action is valuable. Um, and you can communicate clear and understandable in English. So believe in yourself. Wow, that's really and, nice. And um, I must say that the, the master course in the UK may be a bit too late for me at the mid-30s, but it brought me confidence and uh, it encouraged me to change the job to become an English educator later on. It's really motivating. Um, I'm really impressed at the detail that you said. Uh, you look at the cover of the book and it has a big band and you imagine yourself being there one day. I think whenever something is in your head, it's already show us that we can achieve that. It is something that is the universe signals to us. You know, I, I have a huge respect for you because you got the Chivening Scholar. Whoa! You are a Chivening Scholar. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it shows you never stop learning. At that time, you already have a family with two daughters. Uh, what is something that motivates you to keep learning and applying for the scholarship? I think I am a kind of ambitious person. Um, I can't live without plans except for like marriage and love. It just knocked me off for everything else. I always made a plan and to do it. I like um, setting a goal, making plans, and try my best to achieve it. Success or failure, I always value. And many of my friends, my classmates during university, they got scholarship 
um, uh, doctorate or a master, and they traveled all over the world, Australia, USA, UK, and uh, some European countries to study for the master. I wanted to be like them. I wanted to have something to tell, to flex <laughs> during a class reunion. Oh, yeah. um, I wanted to set an example for my children because at the time, my children, my, my daughter, uh, enter primary school and I just uh, wanted to tell them that mother at this age still go to study so why not for you to study to keep on study and I just want to set an example that shows how how amazing efforts you put into learning and um, your perfect presentation of the quote that says age is just a number <laughs> yeah, age is just a number. Uh, you're always learning, and you have a young spirit in yourself, and you're keep um, you're keeping your 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 way of contributing to the society with um, with all of your experience and all of your expertise. Um, what are some potentials in students, in the young people that you can look in, and you think that okay, you should keep up the good work. For young student, I must say, I many times I feel envious with them because they have so many advantages. And with AI, with technologies, teaching material, learning material all around, they have so many opportunities to grow themselves. I, I try to be uh, like a, their friend, their inspirer, their mentor, not only teacher. I do not teach you, I only be with a companion on the, on the road to discover the self. I also often tell them about my experience and my life stories. I hope that I can share with them some kind of inspiration. Nice. Yes. I think being an educator is such a fulfilling, rewarding and happy journey. And I think you have been doing such an amazing job in Thank inspiring you. the young Thank generation you. of students. So um, yes, I hope maybe sometimes I can visit your office. <laughs> welcome, get invite, you're welcome. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I really respect your career and I think that you can go further and further with all of your enthusiasm and your contributions. So thank you very much for sharing with us. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here today to share about my stories and I hope it helps and hope it be inspiring to you young yes, uh, learners. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing talk! I learned a lot and I hope that you can learn a lot from our guests as well. Whenever I come to the set, I always bring my notebook and a pen because I think this is the perfect presentation of knowledge. And knowledge is power. Knowledge is powerful, isn't it? And what I can learn from the guest is that, number one, they always say that they feel so thankful to their teachers and to the knowledge. Um, I think that having gratitude in life is really important because having gratitude equals to having happiness, having the openness to learn. And the second thing is that they always keep learning. They are a perfect examples of lifelong learners. Um, no matter how big their accomplishment in life, they always learn something new. They never stop learning. And I think that learning is definitely a lifelong journey of self-discovery. Third, English is really important. For me, English opens up a new doors of opportunities. As you can remember, um, our guest Chi Thuy, she has you know, been through a lot of career shifts, but everything is really successful. And she has you know, progressed professionally with her English and for Thay Khaim. He has a glamorous, a wonderful career with English language as well. So I think that language is something, language is a tool for us to like achieve our goals um, and to help us to get a lot of opportunities in life. So study languages, um, no matter that is English, no matter that is any other language, as long as you are interested in a particular culture, um, study that language because we're living in a globalized world and the more languages you learn, the more life you are experiencing. So, yes, I think that their, in conclusion, their dedication, their enthusiasm, their openness to learning have reaffirmed my commitment to education and I hope that they do the same to you. Thank you very much for tuning in to IELTS Face Up and see you next time. <laughs>